So LXQt is actually a name you probably haven't actually heard of. It's, uh, it's LXD. It's the Qt port of LXD. Uh, basically, last year we decided, well, the LXD team decided that uh, Qt is way better than GTK. So they decided to port, <laughs> yeah. So they decided to port to Qt. And uh, I was part of the Razer Qt team, and we merged the, the two teams because we had very similar desktop environment. And LX Qt is the kind of the, the child of both projects right now. So this talk isn't actually going to be about LX Qt, it's going to be about Intense. I, I want to have a very quick show of hands. If Maybe we have Android developers. Anyone knows what intents are, either on Android or on the web? OK. So I'll, I'll explain what they are in a minute. Uh, on on LXQt, I work on cross-desktop integration. Uh, I, I do UX. I co-lead the project. But most of all, lately, I've been working on cross-desktop integration. So it involves a lot of work with XDG. So most people here have probably heard at least about XDG. XDG is a bunch of specs, really. Uh, it, it's an effort from uh, all the desktop environments, GNOME, KDE, and so on, to improve cross-desktop compatibility, cross-desktop integration. And what it ends up being is a bunch of uh, specs ranging from things like trash, bootloaders, uh, menus, applications, and so on. Three specs we're going to talk about today. Uh, is the desktop entry spec, which describes the desktop files. If you've ever in installed an application or dealt with an application, you know what desktop files are. There's the shared MIME info spec, which describes MIME types. So it, it basically defines things like uh, you have an image slash PNG MIME type. Uh, you can recognize it by its extension, .png, and you can recognize it by its header, and so on. Finally, we're going to talk about the MIME actions spec a little, which uh, ties those two other specs together. They, uh, MIME actions are basically uh, setting a, an application as default PNG viewer and things like that. And we're going to talk about intents. So the best way I found to describe them, they're a way to leverage the capabilities of registered applications in order to implement generic actions through those applications. They, they're made popular by Android. They, they're a slightly older concept. Um, there were something called Suite before. Uh, the problem has been on, on the desktop for, for a long time. And uh, it, it was a big problem on Android. Because on Android, uh, you, you, have, you have a lot of services you, you want apps for. You want a Facebook app, you want a Twitter app, things like that. And developers can't necessarily deal with all that. And this is what they look like. Uh, this is the action uh, send with text data, so you're just sending some text. Specifically, what the application is doing here is it says, I want to I share some text. I want to send some text to someone. Uh, the Android OS uh, comes back and says, uh, these are the applications you have installed that register the action send. They, they can send text. So you, you can use send text by Bluetooth, by Gmail, and so on. On the desktop, problem is a little different, but it's, it's really the same roots. Say you're a file manager developer. You, uh, you become popular. What are you going to be asked? You're going to be asked to do things like Dropbox integration. Uh, another example, photo galleries, you're going to be asked for Flickr integration. Uh, it's generally dealt with by a plugin infrastructure. So you, you create plugin to integrate with uh, external services. Uh, there's a lot of problems with that. Well, first of all, every single application, 
ends up implementing this. And that, that's really crazy. You, you, have, you have hundreds of file managers out there, and dozens of those implement Dropbox integration. And this pattern is repeated to every application out there. And it, yeah, if you, if you don't have plugin support, for, for users who don't care about Dropbox, what, what do you tell those? I mean, they, they don't care about Dropbox. They don't want Dropbox to be part of their interface. So maybe you can disable it at compile time. No, you, you're not going to tell your users, recompile with dash dash disable Dropbox. You can usually disable plugins if you have a plugin infrastructure. If you don't, that's something else. And yeah. About code duplication, you, ha you have libraries which, which deal with that, but maybe they're not available for your language. And really, the, the problem for the developer is you, you either have to learn things like the Dropbox API and learn protocols and so on, or you have to learn the library API, and it ends up being the same trade-off. Because, yeah, users are going to come back to you and say, that's great. You, di you did Flickr. I use Picasa. What do I do? On Android, this is what it looks like. So in this case, you, you're sending some uh, image data. And the developer uh, of this application, Message Launcher, didn't have to implement any of those protocols. I bet he's glad he didn't have to implement Google Buzz integration. I'm telling you that much. So intense. To sum it up, they're, they're, they're split in two parts. You, you got intent services. So those are the, um, the providers, the, uh, the applications providing the intent. And you got intent clients. Those are basically applications that just ask for an intent. Uh, so services, they are specialized applications. So you can think of them like a uh, web, web app, uh, I mean, an app for a web app, such as your Gmail app on, on Android. But you, they, they're not necessarily tied to web apps. I mean, an email client is a specialized app for email, for example. Thunderbird is a specialized app for email. So what's great about that is those services, they, they know the protocol they deal with. An email client, there's nobody better than an email client to deal with the email protocol. As a file manager, if, if you want to implement you know, right-click, send file, this is pretty basic. But as a file manager developer, you, you don't want to have to deal with email. And you don't want to have to deal with email libraries either. You're, you're not the best person to do that. The best person to do that is the developer of an email client. The other thing that's great about that is the user doesn't get prompted to to use Dropbox if they don't have Dropbox in installed because it's not relevant to them and the functionality is simply not there. I mean, if, uh, if they don't have Dropbox installed, you can pretty much assume that they don't care about Dropbox. Uh, this is the original concept of what it would look like on the desktop. So you, uh, as I said earlier, right-click, send file in a file manager. And you, you get the desktop environment that prompts you to, to send through Bluetooth, through email, through Gmail, maybe web apps, whatever. On the, uh, I mean, on, on the service side, uh, f if you want to implement a provider, well, the entire thing is based on Dbus. And Thunderbird, say Thunderbird wants to implement uh, action send, or we, we haven't quite decided the actions yet. It's still being drafted. But say there's a share file service, and Thunderbird wants to implement that. What it's going to do is it's going to, uh, to keep an eye on org.freedesktop.intense.share file, uh, the share file uh, method there, and it's going to uh, react to, to that. It's going to be sent data through Sharefile. And for example, it can open a new window uh, and create a new email with 
a a asking you to pick a contact to send the share to send the file to. So it, it would be an attachment in this case. Yeah, you can think of Pigeon, for example, which would uh, show you your contact list, pick a contact, and we're going to send the file to, to that contact. So it's pretty simple. Uh, some other use cases uh, that we can think of was um, one use case which I've actually run into because I've been working on a screenshot app or screen grab with someone else. Well, if you want to upload uh, the, the screenshot, you, you do print screen, you want to upload the screenshot somewhere, uh, we have an image your plugin, an image shack plugin, we have uh, a uh, media crash plugin, someone asked for a minus plugin. This is a pain. This is a pain. You have to learn every single API. There's no libraries for any of those. Uh, so this, this is something that could be solved with Intents. You install, you install one dedicated application for, for the service. Um, say you have a user management app. This is something I'm going to demo in a minute, by the way. Say you have a user management app, uh, something on OSX, uh, when you create a new user, uh, OSX lets you take a picture uh, through your webcam to, uh, to use as your avatar. And this is pretty standard functionality. It exists on Android as well for contacts managers, uh, taking a picture for, for the user's avatar or picture. If you if you have an app like that, do, do you want to have to deal with a webcam? Do you want to have to learn webcam APIs when you're just doing user management? I, I, it's a bit silly. So this is another can canonical use case. Another use case, which is a bit out there because I don't, I, I don't know if it's going to happen ever. But every app has a file picker. On Many apps have a file picker. It's what you see on Control O. Uh, open a file or select a file. Uh, there's different ones for G GDK, uh, for KDE, for Qt. Uh, also has uh, its own different from KDE. Uh, different ones for Java. Every single toolkit, Wine, and so on. I it's pain. It's a pain. And if a file manager could implement that. You would keep your keybinds, you would keep your interface, it would be standardized through every application, and the, the toolkit itself wouldn't have to deal with it. So it, it could be solved through Intense. Could be. I want to stop there. I'm going to demo uh, user management, um, a user management app. If you give me a second, because there's two screens here. See this? Oops. So this is. Uh, let's imagine this is a contact manager or a user user manager for your desktop. So this is a an avatar, a regular avatar that that's built in. Let's click change picture, and give me a second because th things are popping up on the other screen. Uh, you are presented with uh, the desktop environments intent middleman, so to say, which uh, is going to show you, it's going to show you applications which, which you can uh, execute the intent with. In this case, we have a file manager with which you could pick a file. This is not implemented yet. And we have Camoso, which is a webcam application. So what we're, what we're going to do when we're going to open Camoso, we're going uh, to be sending Camoso a dbus message uh, that says take a picture. Uh, once again, it's popping on the other screen. We're going to um, send Camoso a, a message on uh, to take a picture. And we're going to confirm the picture. And if everything went well, when I close this, you're going to see, ta-da! Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So those are intents. Um, another use case for intents, so to say, is portals. So this is something that was talked about at the free desktop meeting last year uh, of the desktop summit. Uh, portals are a way to communicate between sandboxed apps on Linux. So there's, there's a model that's being worked on of having uh, sandboxed apps, uh, sandboxed fat apps on Linux. And say you want to open a file or say you want to get file data or in, uh, in a sandboxed app, you, you can't rely on having access to the file system. So say you want to implement a file picker through, through that it would rely on intents because you can't, uh, you, you, you don't have access to the file system, but through Dbus and through uh, a system of permissions, we, we can transmit file data to, to the application. What's great about that is KDBus, uh, which, I, were you guys at the uh, at Leonard's talk earlier, uh, a couple of hours ago, yeah? Uh, he talked about KDBus, and KDBus uh, fixes some um, bandwidth issues with DBus. Uh, DBus is really slow for anything above a few megabytes. Uh, KDBus, on the other hand, you can transmit gigabytes of data with no real issue uh, to, to another app. So you can directly deal with the file data rather than having uh, to pass file paths around. And this would use XDG intents as as a base uh, to to work with so another functionality of intents is viewing and editing files tricky because on, on android android was built along with intents so it has no concept of opening files you just have an action edit and an action view and this is something we really miss on Linux. Have you ever installed the GIMP or installed some uh, image editing application that takes ages to, to open, gives you a really nice loading screen? You double click your, uh, your pictures or whatever. You, you just want to view them. They open in the GIMP and it is really infuriating. This was one of my first experiences on Linux. It still happens today. And it, it really is infuriating. The problem is we can't really implement that with intents. But we can implement it in a backwards compatible way. So as I said earlier, MIME actions do this. But MIME actions don't support viewing and editing. So all we do is we introduce a concept of viewing and editing to MIME actions. And the current, the, the current way of Opening files is just going to be a generic open action. So that's, that's how it's planned. Uh, how, much, how much time is left? Because if there's enough time, I'm going to do a quick demo of that, because this is actually implemented today. OK. I'm going to do a demo of that. Why not? So this is, this is a file manager. Uh, this is Dolphin, KDE file manager. So open a PDF with this. And give it a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Th this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Th this is what I'm getting. I'm getting the GIMP with an empty file to open a PDF. This is great. This is really great. Uh, so same thing if I want to open some, yeah. You, you see what's going on here. OK. So that's the current situation. Let's demo. This is a different file manager because I had to use my own to work with it. But here you see we can just have a regular open action, which is actually defaulting to view uh, on this file manager, because 
it just knows the concept. We can still edit the file if we need to. So this would open in the GIMP because the GIMP can edit PDFs. Uh, but regular open is going to open it in Chromium. But it's not showing up uh, on this screen, unfortunately. Same thing if we go back to the pictures. This opens in Fe. There we go. So this is all implemented. I, I, it's available today on GitHub. Uh, I, oops. Uh, I, I will put a URL at the end of the talk uh, to, to the GitHub repository. This is what it looks like in the desktop file. You still, you still have the, the MIME type, so it's backwards compatible. You just add an edit or a view key. We're going to skip that. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna check out, uh, it's in Python. Uh, it's implemented in Python. Uh, there will be uh, a C implementation as well, of course. But currently, if you wanna play with it, Python XDG. This is the repository URL. More generically, if you wanna just join the LXD community, we welcome new developers. We need new developers. Uh, just join.lxd.org, there's uh, our mailing list and everything. And that's it, that's it. If you want, have any questions, I will take them now. Alex. Is the MAM type edit open in Linux MAM or is it just still Is the MIME type edit, sorry? Yeah, the MIME type action. Yeah. Has it been standardized? Not yet, but I, uh, I've, uh, I've messaged the XDG mailing list. Everyone seems to approve, uh, so it's just waiting for a standardization. Uh, I'm also waiting to do some more work on intents before I formally uh, standardize this. But the plan is to standardize it. We, we want it. Uh, pretty much everyone wants it. Other questions? In the back? Um, you lost me with the whole open edit thing. I lost oh, you with the whole open edit okay, thing. I'm going to get to the question, I promise. Yeah. So up until that point, I understood exactly what you were talking about. Uh -huh. And then you brought up the example of, well, when I click on this, I get, a, I get the GIMP, right? Now, I understood that because you then went and did it. Uh, and I, was, I think you didn't even intend to do it. But that's a configuration issue. And my distribution that I use, when I, when I hit a, an image, um, I, I I understand what you're. I understand what you're saying. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, MIME actions only support the concept of opening files. Uh, say you have an HTML file, you can indeed. I mean, uh, Kate can open HTML files because HTML files are a child of the text plane MIME type text HTML. Chromium also can open HTML files, but it does a, co a completely different thing with HTML files. Both those apps are completely fine to open H an HTML file with, but when you, when you install both of those files, by default, there's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be one or the other opening the file, and there's gonna be no, no more information about what you intend to do with the file. So in a file manager, uh, what we assume is that when someone wants to open a file, it wants to view it. Uh, he wants to view it. So it's the same problem as for images, uh, game versus fair versus ocular with, mm, and whatever. That the idea is to bring the concept of the edit action and the view action which are things that are handled by Intense on Android and by Web Intense as well. Um, on XDG, we can't handle those with Intense without breaking everything, so we don't do that. Does that clarify it? There was another question around here. Yes? 
Yes, uh, there How will be. There will be an option to remember the choice. Basically, uh, the the way intents work uh, is it, it's kind of implemented side by side with MIME actions. So everything that MIME actions bring will be brought to intents. So if you're not familiar with the MIME actions spec, it brings uh, things such as setting default applications removing applications, to, uh, saying that applications can't actually do that or you don't want them to do that, to open this kind of file. Uh, uh, it also brings uh, favorite applications, so uh, you want this kind of app to open this kind of file even if I it doesn't say it can, so on and so on. Does it clarify? So the question was, is this just a subset of what Android can do, or do I plan to port everything? Uh, I don't plan to port everything. Uh, Android has its own use cases. You mentioned uh, sending an SMS, sending a, a call to, to a number which intents, uh, which are handled by intents. Uh, these are not really relevant to the desktop. However, the, in, the idea of the intent system is that it's, exen, it's extensible. So that if it is relevant to a suite of applications that you're going to bring to the desktop, you, you, can, uh, you can bring your own intents with it. Uh, if you noticed earlier, I forgot to mention, the, the share file intent I mentioned was namespaced as org.freedesktop.intents, but it doesn't have to be. If you bring your own uh, intents as uh, uh, myphoneapp.com, uh, it's going to be com.myphoneapp.intents, for example. So if you want to bring your own intents suite, go ahead. It's just Dbus. It's really just Dbus interfaces. All that the desktop files do, they say that your app implements this. And so it can reliably be executed, and then you can call uh, Call that, and ex you can expect it to work. That, that's basically what it does. Because, but the use cases are not exactly the same, but the concept behind it yeah. is similar. For example, on the desktop, uh, with the email, it can be very interesting to, to be asked uh, whether I want to send an email or add the email to my uh, contact list, or for example, uh, retry the uh, DB key just to sign, uh, to, to, to sign the key or something like that. Uh, the, um, the thing here is that. Android uses a resource system. I, I'm, I'm still thinking about this. It, it's still, because currently, as I presented them, intents don't support MIME types. And uh, I've been thinking about it more and more, and I think intents should definitely be bound uh, to s some MIME types. But uh, if, if, you, if you go to the uh, XDG lists, which I forgot to put here, well, nice. Uh, th no, there it is. If you go to the XDG list, uh, I posted about intents uh, about a month ago. Uh, if you can reply to that email with your thoughts, that would be really great because I I'm looking for people who, uh, who can provide feedback about all this. And this goes to everyone, by the way. Uh, yeah, I think we have time for another question. Are, in, uh, are existing desktops interested in this? Yes, GNOME is very interested in this. I'm not sure about KDE. KDE has shown some interest, but it might just be a couple of developers. But yes, GNOME is definitely interested. They've been trying to get something similar out of the window. Uh, and LXD is interested in the sense that we're using LXD as a playground to actually implement this. Last question. Yes. Um, if I'm not a specialist in XDG, but would that tie in completely compatible to stuff like XDG open and those settings, or is that? 
Yes. Yes, XDG Open relies on uh, the three specs which I showed earlier, and the intense spec is complementary to, to all of this and implemented in very similar ways. Well, that's it.